services. Well, Matt Driscoll is an editor of Asian Aviation based in Singapore for us. Matt, um, undoubtedly, this is a sector-wide demand disruption, but does this announcement in any way reflect investor confidence in the management of SIA? I don't think so. I, I, SIA has been a, a well-managed airline for quite some time. Uh, the problem is not a management problem. The problem is a medical problem that is affecting every airline around the world. You know, as we heard today, Singapore has cut 96% of their capacity. Qantas has cut a huge amount of their capacity, their international flights, their grounding in a lot of airplanes. Qantas is undoubtedly one of the best-run airlines in the world. Uh, Air New Zealand in the same situation, Cathay Pacific as well. So it's not a management problem at all, it, it, and it's actually not an economic problem in, in that sense. It's a medical problem that is affecting the entire world. Now, Matt, speaking of the economics of it, downstream, there may be a problem brewing. There are discussions, as I said, to ensure that their credit lines downstream are uh, intact. How does this decision, though, impact the people who work not only for the airline, but work with the airline? So we're talking about the employees, the agents, the suppliers, their co-chair partners across the world? Well, that's the problem. It's when you ground a plane or you ground a fleet of planes, uh, it affects the airport workers. It affects the flight crew, the pilots. It also affects, uh, you know, think about the car parks. Uh, so that airport revenue that they get from people parking their cars for short term or long term, it affects their revenues as well. Uh, the restaurant workers at the, at the airport. Uh, the suppliers, the Boeing suppliers, for example, Boeing's having a hard time. They grounded the MAX. Uh, one of their biggest suppliers, Spirit, laid off something like 3,000 people. So you're going to see this ripple through the entire aviation economy, um, and that's, that's the sad part about it. And nobody knows when it's going to get better. Speaking of that ripple, is it a question then of when, not if? Uh, this might be a foretaste of what's ahead for the entire airline sector. Well, I think you're going to see, for example, you're going to see some consolidation. Uh, some of the low-cost carriers, uh, you've got uh, Hong Kong Airlines in uh, Hong Kong that's having trouble. HNA uh, that owns Hainan Airlines. Uh, was actually taken over by the provincial government. We're going to have a story about that in our upcoming issue of the magazine. Um, so there's going to be some consolidation with the weaker players. Uh, airlines that have leased a lot of airplanes, uh, they're in negotiations with the lessors to either defer payments or minimize payments. But anyone who's been leasing airplanes as part of their strategy is going to be in a big problem because they still got to make payments on those. All right, Matt Driscoll, many thanks for sharing that expertise with us. It's a question we will be returning to, I'm sure, in the days to come. Matt Driscoll, the editor of Asian Aviation.